Let's give this a try and take a look at how this workspace works within our products. So first I'm going to switch over to my file explorer and let's take a look at the files and folders that are delivered with the software. As I pointed out earlier, these are delivered on the C drive in your program data folder, Bentley, Open Roads Designer, could you say CE or it could say Connect Edition with some numbers after it depending on which version you're running. Um, and then inside that there's a configuration folder. Everything that we're going to work with is inside of here. Now what we've tried to do is self-document most of these files inside the CFG, so go ahead and open them up and take a look at this if you're reading those. Uh, we also have another white paper on recommendations on how to move this to a server side if you're doing that. It really involves just moving one file out there, or you can use some Windows environment variables to do that. It's quite simple to do. Likewise, you can include the same workspace into your other products like MicroStation or OpenBridge Modeler, Gint, uh, Ecosim Building Designer, etc. We're not going to get into all that today. What I really want to focus on is just how does this organization civil structure work and how do I create workspaces and work sets. So I'm going to go into my organization civil folder. And what you'll see in here is a couple of delivered folders that we have. Uh, you will not have this save folder. I'm going to bring some files in from that here momentarily, just some stuff I set up for this demonstration. But what we deliver out of the box is a relatively complete sample workspace in both imperial and metric units. So if you go into this folder structure, you'll see a whole variety of folders where you'll find files that define specific things that are happening. If I go into the DGN library folder, you can see there's a whole bunch more stuff here for civil cells and feature definitions and uh, graphic user interface changes, seed files, sheet seed files, etc. So all kinds of stuff delivered in here. All of this data you can use as is, or you could copy one of these folders and customize it to your own data but still leaving this data structure in place. You would just come in and swap things out. So let's say civil cells, you had some of your own that you wanted to supplement in here. You could add them in. So how does this work exactly? Well, what we're gonna do is we would just come here and we would pick whichever folder is most appropriate to us, the one that we want to, the units that we use essentially whether that's Imperial or metric. I'll go ahead and just copy the Imperial one. So I'm gonna copy that folder and paste it here. And I could call that folder now, whatever my agency is called or my company is called, my base standards. I'll just call this agency base standards just for a kind of a generic name, but it could be called anything you want. Now you also need to copy the config file that goes along with it. So I copy that, I'll give it the same name. And you're done. You're ready to start using these standards. Now you can go into here certainly and make any and all edits to these that you want, replace our seed files with your seed files, etc. So you can customize it however you want, but you've got the structure there. That's all you need to do to build it. Now let's look at the product. So let me go ahead and open up Open Roads Designer here, and let's look at how this translates into the interface in Open Roads Designer. So I come here and I say, well, what standards do I have available? I don't see something here pointed to my standards. But remember, what we're seeing in this list is not our base standards. What we're seeing is our workspace. So currently in my environment, I have three workspaces set up, one for Imperial standards, one for metric, and one for training and examples. And that's what I see here. So if I go back over to my file explorer here, let's take a look at this. I'm going to just collapse these folders for a minute. So we were in the organization civil folder. I'm going to now move down to the workspaces folder and you see those three workspaces right here that I had that appear in the interface. Imperial, metric, training, and examples. Imperial, metric, training, and examples. 
this is what defines what appears in the interface. Before we add a new one here, I want to just kind of tie this together. So if we look at one of these, let's just look at the Imperial Standards as an example. If I open up this configuration file, one of the things that it has in it right at the very top here is a definition that points to the organization civil base standard that we want to use. So what we're telling the software is when we go in here and we select from here Imperial Standards, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab everything that's defined in Open Roads Training Dash Imperial, which remember was one of my base standards. So it's going to go load all of that. Once it's loaded that, then it's going to layer on top of it, and that's what the rest of all this definition down here does. It says layer on top of it anything that you find in this workspace. So when I go and I select the workspace, this one here, I've told it to go pick up everything out of this organization civil standard and then come back and layer on top of it everything in this imperial standards workspace. So I could come in here and you'll find a series of folders also at the workspace level. Seed files, DGN libraries, etc. The same kinds of folders. Now what you'll notice out of the box and when you first create a workspace is all of these are completely empty. Most of the time you're probably not going to put anything in here. But what they are is that place that you can put things when you do have departmental or company standards that you need to layer over the base. Beyond that then, once I select that I want to use a workspace, I can select or define a new work set. In this case, I don't even have a work set created yet. Nothing appears here. And if I go look at my folder structure under my Imperial Standards work sets folder, you will see it's empty other than our little readme file we put in there for some instruction for you. So I can create a work set. I'll just call this one demo. I click OK. Demo's now there. If I flip over to my folder, you will see that it has created the appropriate files. There's a configuration file for demo. There is a DGNWS, which is where the sheet indexing all gets stored at, as well as a folder structure for it that has a similar set of standard folders, again, to what we saw with our workspace. So this is now at the work set level, or the project level, but we have another set of blank folders where we can come in here and drop in data as necessary. All right, let's move back up and create our own. So I'm going to go all the way back up to the organization civil again. And previously we had created this agency base standard out there. So we've created a new one. Let's assume for a minute that we have now gone into these folders and we've created our new feature definitions and cells and element templates and level definitions and all those things that come into the settings and you've configured all that. It's all sitting out there. How do I use it now? Well, I come to my interface and I say I want to create a new workspace. And I will call this one Acme Corp. And I want to point it to Agency X. We'll just call it that. So this could be my company, uh, Acme Corp. Uh, this is for me, and I'm going to have my own standards in there, but this is work that I'm doing for Agency X. So I could create one of these for each DOT that I do work with, or each municipality I do work with, or if you're a DOT, you might want to create one of these for each department, so right-of-way, bridge, survey, road design, etc. You may have five or six different ones for those departments. So you would create those. Now what that's created, if we go out and we look at the workspaces folder here, is we now have a new config file called Acme Corp Agency X, whatever we chose to name it. We also have a folder structure that's been created for us with that name. 
the folder structure is already set up with these same blank folders just like I talked about before so you can see it's very easy to create these folder structures we're gonna build them all for you if you use this process then you can just drop data in there and use it the one change I do need to make though this is the one manual change I pointed out I do have to come into this config file and edit it right at the very top we've got it kind of documented here but the one big make change here this is the one thing you have to change is you need to replace this text right here with the name of the organization standard that you're going to use so we had created one here we called agency based standards could have been named anything that was just the name we picked I will put that in here and save that file now when we select it from here it's going to go grab all those base standards that we had specified it's going to layer on top of them whichever standards that we have applied in this folder if there are any there may not be any and we can likewise create any of our project data that we're going to create and you will typically have multiple projects in there you may have dozens and dozens of projects in there that are active at any one time so I can go in and certainly create these projects you can see I'll just create a fourth one here so we've created four projects fairly quickly there just through the user interface but if I go back to the files and I look at that what did it really create well it's creating our config files it's creating our sheet indexing files it's creating the folder structure for each of these including all of these blank folders so if I want to drop that data in there I can very easily the whole premise behind this is two real big things number one we're allowing multiple base standards here instead of using this organization folder that's kind of the microstation default same concept as this the problem with this folder is it only allows you one set of base standards which becomes tough if you're doing work for multiple places or you have multiple types of base standards by taking this organization civil approach you can have as many different base standards as you need out here within each of these folders each one of these is essentially equivalent to what was the organization originally so each one of these folder structures is equivalent to that so you can have multiples out there we then have our workspace and the key to this is that that workspace points to that base standard that we're going to use so it calls it so we can still have multiple workspaces they're calling multiple different base standards very flexibly through the interface that concludes our presentation for today If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.